Hi. This is a short introductory uh, presentation on board off design tool that I put together over the last 12 months or so while I've been teaching myself about building twin tip kite boards. The idea of this first video is just to give a very quick overview of the major sections in board off and what I'll do in subsequent videos is do a, gu uh, a guided tour through the board off workbook um, and show how to use it and some practical tips uh, to keep in mind when you're using it to design your own boards. Board off. Board off is a free twin tip kite board design tool in Excel 2007 uh, designed to help people like myself in their DIY kite board building efforts. Specifically, it's, um, the de it's a design tool that allows you to design, save, share and easily compare different designs. It's an objective way to describe a board's design. Something that you often see in promotional material and also in a lot of reviews of boards is very non-specific ways of describing a board's design. This gets quite confusing if, or, sorry, those sorts of descriptions are not particularly useful if you want to compare the performance of different boards um, and relate that to some different aspect of the, of the board itself. So board off allows you to describe precisely with a fairly short list of parameters the actual design of the board so that when you tweak it and you sense some kind of difference in the performance of the board you can then try and relate it back to some of the design characteristics. And finally board off um, has got a section in it to help get some insights into the flex profile of the board that you've designed as well as the strength. So what can it specifically do? Well the genesis of board off was really to produce board outlines in one-to-one -one scale that I could then produce um, templates for. And so that's really where it grew out of. Initially the board outlines you could only print them out on a standard printer under A4 sheets which you then had to cut up and sticky tape together to get your template. Uh, what I've added in subsequently is the ability to export it as a DXF file um, which can be read by most CAD programs around and certainly the free CAD programs that I found online you could do that very simply. That then allows you to export it as a PDF file in one-to-one -one format and get your local uh, printers, anyone with the capacity to print plans, to print off that one-to-one -one scale. You can then directly transfer that onto your material or you can make a template and use a router to cut that out. Just to give you an idea what the templates look like, this is one that I'm just starting to work on now which is a will be a 130 by 41 um, sort of light wind freestyle board and this shows you some of the elements of it. Um, you can see uh, fin placements, um, foot pad placements and in this case I've got a second deck which is going on top just to stiffen it up a little bit in the middle because I, um, I ride a surf a lot and so just a single thickness deck um, would, probably, um, would probably snap at some point. Uh, this is another example of some of the features you can see, uh, you can get with board off uh, on the design. So um, cutaway tips, um, an overlay grid, so that if you are printing it out on A4 sheets, um, you've got a grid there to line up the sheets so you don't end up uh, with a board that curves around a corner. Um, the positions for foot pad inserts, all those kind of things. Uh, board off has got a compositing tool which allows you to visually design multiple deck boards. So what I mean by this is there's the capacity in board off to overlay a pre-existing um, design which is this outline here with the new one that you're working on so you can get some sort of visual idea about the relativity of the two boards. Um, it allows you to produce templates for your rocker table so the rocker table design it's got in mind is one where you have the jigs laying down the side and then along the centre and the rocker table surface is clamped or screwed over the top of that. Um, so while that's the design that I have in mind it's also quite easy to take from there. Those templates are uh, measurements that you would need for your adjusters if you're working with an adjustable rocker table. And here's an example of what those jigs would look like. The centre one obviously is the centre jig, sorry the top one there is your centre jig. And the one on the outside here is the jig that will ensure that your rocker table surface will curve through the right amount to give you the amount of rocker, sorry, the amount of concave that you want at the side of your board. You can add annotations. Um, and this is an example of one of the early rocker tables that I made using the board off jigs. 
um, old doors, so M <laughs> MDF with uh, malamine on the outside. And you can see here the jigs with the rocker table surface clamped in between it. Uh, there's a jig down the middle that you can't see, but you can get a sense of the concave in there by the amount that this uh, spirit level is standing off from the surface. Uh, weight calculations. And on the, here is a snapshot of how that looks in, in board off. You put in a whole stack of parameters about some of the insert and some of the uh, materials that you use. And board off will give you a breakdown um, of the different uh, contributions to weight of the various sections. So in this example here, you can see the, the core, which is wood, um, is heavier than the laminate. And the board comes out at about three kilos. Um, so on the board on the heavier side. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, it, uh, there's a, a flex model in board off which takes your actual design, um, so outline and allows you to sculpt, uh, sorry, put in the parameters for the core profile, and it puts out a, um, a shows you how the board will flex under certain test conditions that you can also enter in board off. And along with the flex profile, what it can do is calculate the maximum stresses and strains in the top and bottom skins, so you can get an idea whether or not you're reaching the um, danger territory with the type of laminate that you're using. And here's an example of the charts that you can, you'll, you'll see in board off in the flex section. This top chart here is um, showing you the board from side on, how the tip Will, sorry, how the board will flex when it's under certain loads. So in this case, the test load, which is you can configure in board off, is a 20 kilos applied just at the tip of the board and the board clamped in the middle. So that profile you're looking at there is how the board will actually bend up. Um, in addition to the pro profile there, what we've got down here in this maximum stress and strain section um, is showing you precisely that, the maximum stresses and strains that you're getting in the top layer. Now there's some discontinuities here because in this particular design the laminate layers don't go, each of them doesn't cover 100% of the board, they stop at various places and that was um, intentional to try and get some additional flex into the tips where the um, where it's subject to less, less strain, le sorry, less stresses. So why use it? Well, first and foremost it's free um, and free is very good. It's uh, easy to create, print, save, tweak, um, uh, compare your designs and as I said before to get an objective way of characterising a particular design. Now um, I probably should have put easy in lower case because uh, although board has been downloaded uh, well over a thousand times now, uh, the little bit of feedback that I have got back from people is that it's uh, pretty impenetrable um, without because of the absence of some kind of user guide um, to it and so hence the reason for these videos. So once you've had a chance to have a look at these videos hopefully you'll agree that it's uh, capital E easy rather than lowercase e easy. Uh, it's quite flexible. Um, most of the design characteristics that you'll see in uh, modern twin tip kite boards can be relatively easily switched on and off in in board off, so inverted tips, multiple decks, you know, pickle fork style boards, surf twin tips where you know really narrow tips and that kind of thing. Uh, take hopefully removes a lot of the trial and error um, from rocker table design, and in particular uh, eliminating the risk of having asymmetrical rocker table designs. And that, that that's true for both um, for both fixed jig rocker tables and adjustable ones. Um, as I mentioned, an objective way of describing precisely the design, um, the design of the board, so both the outline and the rocker concave profile, uh, goes a long way to supersede the non-specific descriptions that you see in marketing material and in um, and in uh, test rides, uh, and hopefully will allow you to equate changes in performance, very specifically to changes in design parameters. Um, it's easy to share your designs, you just send the parameters off um, to your mates or send them the whole workbook, get their feedback. Make some weight decisions early in the piece so that hopefully you don't uh, waste money having to do too many prototypes um, before you get something you're particularly proud of. And then finally, uh, getting an ob objective view on how to, sorry, on the impact of swapping out pairs of parameters in your design. So for example, if you're trying to get some idea about the impact of reducing the thickness of your core versus taking off a layer of laminate, board off uh, flex model will allow you to get an idea um, of what the relative trade-offs are in both those cases. And also once you've designed a couple of boards and you've got a, a felt sense of what the particular flex profile feels like, that then gives you a benchmark 
uh, to design your other boards around. So using that as a benchmark, and one that I've been using is that under a 20 kilo load, it should deflect 100 millimetres, um, which is quite a relatively stiff board. Now that I'm wanting to make something more flexible, I've got that as a benchmark, and so at least using the theoretical parameters that are available for the different materials I'm going to be using, I'll be able to make some decisions that will uh, introduce around about 20% more flex, or at least give me a very good chance that it's going to be in the sort of, you know, the, the 10 to maybe 30% more flexible, um, rather than just putting the finger in the air and, and sort of going at it blindly. Here's some pictures of boards that I've produced using board off. Uh, this board over here um, is an example of some of the features that I've spoken about in board off so far. So you can see that there are two decks there, um, uh, inverted tips, so those cutaway tips at the end, and, and wastes, uh, so sections that come in, so sort of cut out sections in the middle of the board. Um, that's partly for a flex effects reason and, and partly just for the look of it. Um, and then these other couple of boards um, over here, this one is actually, this is a foam core with a wood veneer on the outside of it. Um, and as you can see, it's got quite a lot of rocker in it. Um, and that was a bit of an experiment for a, a board to ride in chop, which uh, ended tragically, unfortunately, uh, with the board uh, cracking after a session at the wake park on it. And then this board down the bottom here is my latest stuff. Uh, sorry about this. Come on. This board over here is my latest effort in um, the in uh, a light wind board, which despite the uh, fairly manky finish on the board, for reasons it's all well documented in my blog, it's actually turned out probably the best board I think that I've ridden ever. Um, not that I've ridden a lot of production boards, but just in terms of the ones that I've um, produced myself, this is hands down the best board. Absolutely trucks up wind, gets going in relatively light winds, um, and extremely thin boards, only six millimetres thick at the centre and four and a half out the sides, um, is actually doesn't feel as heavy or doesn't feel as large as it is. So that's hopefully whets your appetite for some of the output that you can get. Uh, some of the under, hoods, under the hood stuff about board off, it is um, set for a maximum length of 140 centimetres. There's no special reason that it should be 140 centimetres, it's just that when I was putting this together, I never envisaged I would do anything longer than that. Um, and so it, it would be relatively easy to change and I will do that in the future, but at the moment it's 140 is as big as it gets. Uh, it works in Microsoft Excel 2007 or later. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in earlier versions for some inexplicable reason. The way that the macros operate in earlier versions um, doesn't agree with the way that Board Office is set up. Um, I'm sure that someone with some good knowledge in that area could probably adapt it um, relatively easily. Makes extensive use of Visual Basic for applications macro, so you'll need to have that switched on. Um, skip point four because I'm repeating myself. Uh, it's about two and a half megs, so it's not too bad. A lot of calculations, so all the calculations for the outlines and the rocker and the flex and everything, um, those calculations are done at every millimetre along the length of the board. So um, the, by default, uh, board off is set up so you have to manually, so you have to press F9 to manually recalculate rather than the whole thing recalculating every time you change a parameter, which was particularly painful. Uh, it's free to use and distribute as long as you keep the cover page in there and uh, get on and uh, give me some comments about it to let me know if, it's, if you found it useful or also if you think there's some features that uh, would be worthwhile to add in please also let me know. Um, it's been downloaded over a thousand times now. Um, and so I know that uh, there are a number of people out there who've uh, been making really good use of it. If you are, or if you're getting good value out of it, or if you're you know, not getting good value out of it and you just feel like commenting, it'd be great if you could jump onto my blog and just leave some comments there for other people who are, um, who are coming in to DIY kite board building. Maybe give them a bit of direction on, on how to get some value out of board off. It uh, comes preloaded with a lot of templates that you can just select and print um, to save you all the hassles of going about your designs. Um, most of them are my designs that I've come up with or copies of commercial boards that I've done simply by overlaying um, the outline designer over the top of a JPEG of the board that I pulled off the web. Um, there are also a couple on there from some other users of board off who sent me their designs and we've incorporated those as their as default ones for you to play around with. So next steps, just grab another grab a version of it. If you go to my blog, myvirtualshed.blogspot.com, you'll be able to download the latest version. Um, yeah, use it, 
change it however you like, post up suggestions, new features, all, all that stuff. And if you do make a board using it, it would be absolutely brilliant to see some photos of it and let, let, um, just to let me know that people are making use of this and finding it value and that, um, yeah, that I've, I've made a positive contribution to the uh, DIY kiteboard community.